the perfect call. Tough to get it started in that early morning fall. As soon as What's going down, everybody? <laughs> we are back between the barrels. How you doing, Jack? I'm doing great today. What about you, bro? Oh, dude, any better I couldn't stand it. <laughs> okay, Jack. I'm, oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm sure everybody watching at home already knows who this man is. Well, His reputation precedes him. Well, that might be a stretch, okay? <laughs> but for, tra- for tradition purposes, I like it. I'm going to go ahead and say, uh, sir, who are you and what do you do? I have no idea. So I, I, just, I just walked in the door and I sat down here. Okay. That's the best answer yet in a year of doing this. Absolutely. <laughs> no, my name is Danny Babin. Uh, I happen to be a parish councilman here in Terrebonne Parish. I awesome. represent District 7. District 7. Yeah, I'm proud of District 7. Grand Kaya, by the Lodge, and a good bit of by Black. Mulberry, Barrios, Terra Kane, those areas. I uh, like it. Nice. Good area. Good contrast from city to oh, power. You got my yeah. area back there. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Oh, child, that's your councilman, yeah, bro. Yeah, like yeah you, straight <laughs> keep, up. Keep it tight tonight. <laughs> You've been in the politics for a while, involved in the community. What got you started in Tavern Parish politics? You know, I, it goes back to uh, the days my, my girls went to St. Francis, okay? Uh-huh. And I got involved. There used to be what it was called a penny party then, the Halloween Bazaar, all right? Man, I remember. Got penny. involved remember in the that. Bazaar. We, we had barbecues at St. Francis, you know. Mike, mm-hmm. i never forget Mike St. Martin's crew was the guys that lit the barbecue pits. Mm-hmm. They would go at 3 o'clock in the morning. We'd show up at 5 o'clock, and then we'd start putting the chicken and the sausage mm-hmm. and everything on. And I, I kind of got... You know, a lot of what I've heard tonight so far is community, and that's what this is bringing. So it kind of gave me an interest in the community. Yeah. And, and uh, my degree in college is history and government, so I, I kind of led into it that way as well. But just got involved at St. Francis and then wound up getting involved at Vanderbilt. I was the president of the school board at Vanderbilt. Actually, nice. I, good story. My oldest daughter, I'm not going to say how old she is, okay, because then she wouldn't be very happy. <laughs> but uh, the president of the school board at, at Vanderbilt and the principal signed the diplomas. And I happened to be the president of the school board my daughter's senior year and go. was able to sign her diploma. So it's kind of neat. That's, you cool. Know, that, That's real that, uh, cool. That's a good little family I mean, treasure. Yeah, right. it, it is. Not I mean, many people could that. say that. No, it's <laughs> exactly <laughs> right. You know, and, and, and then from there kind of transitioned uh, – I've been in the seafood business for about 37 years, shrimp processing, and got involved heavily in the politics of that and was fortunate enough to be appointed by two governors to the State Wildlife and Fisheries Commission. I was appointed by Edwin Edwards to fulfill somebody's term for about a year and a half. And then uh, when Foster came in, he reappointed me for four more years. That's and awesome. it was, you know, anytime you get the, the opportunity to, to sit on a state board, it's, 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 uh, it makes you feel pretty good. Yeah, okay? awesome. You know, you're only one of seven in the whole state. And, uh, you know, I had a couple of opportunities to, it may not seem, seem like a lot to some people, but I had the opportunity to introduce the governor, you know, into a meeting. And, yeah, and it's just, I mean, uh, that's a big deal, uh, man. You know, it was a big deal to me. Absolutely. I felt like I was a kid then, but I was probably in my 40s, okay? <laughs> you know, but, uh, I'm in my 40s, and I do that a yeah, lot. Yeah, but, like but uh, you know, just got involved there. And, in, and on the shrimp side, you know, being in the processing business, we have a, a processing association of, of seven states, all the Gulf states and up to Georgia, and I was the president of that. Wow. And then Louisiana Shrimp Association back in the day, uh, we had 14,000 members. I was the president of that. Uh, sure. And then moved on in, in the parish. Uh, when, when my good friend Don Schwab was elected to parish president, uh-huh. Don appointed me to the Planning and Zoning Commission nice. and uh, spent eight years on that. And, and if any of you guys ever, any people out there, ever want to become a councilman, one of the best, first of all, you need to get, you need to volunteer your time on boards and commissions, right. okay? But the planning commission is great in a sense because it, it, there's two factors that come out. You're dealing with people's personal property, mm-hmm. so you feel that passion. Mm-hmm. And second of all, you're dealing with stuff throughout the whole parish, so you're learning more about the parish and what they believe in. You know? right. So it, it was fun. I spent eight years on there and decided, you know what, I think I'm going to run for parish council. And I did, and I won. Wow. And, and, and really, really enjoyed it. And then... Uh, 
Actually, I ran for Paris president uh, against President Dove and, and was not successful, and that's fine. Yeah, right. uh, sat out for four years and realized how much I missed it and ran for my seat back and won, and here I am back in it again. Wow. So, you know, it's just, it, like I said, the theme I've heard the whole night here so far has been about community. And we are the community. Absolutely. If we don't take part in it, who's going to take part in it? We've right. been, okay. We're pretty big on the community. Oh, I know y'all are. And if we don't step up oh, like yes. a, someone in the younger generation, we feel, has to grab the reins from you guys. you got to so keep guys passing the be, torch. Right. You know? Someone has to be next, so yeah. why not us? If it's yeah. not going to be us, who will There's it be? There's no doubt. So? I mean, look, I'm the oldest person on the, on the council, okay? Jessica Domingue is the youngest now. That's good. You know, yeah. you, you bring right new on. blood, new ideas. Yeah. Uh, into what you do, so it's like that in, in uh, it's like that on all levels of government. Right. We're not going to start talking about the federal government, are we? Because I tell you what, we could be here forever. No, yeah. okay. Mitchell but, ran out but, of film but, on that thing. But I, bro. but I can tell you right now, I believe in term limits, okay? Because too many people go in there poor and they come out rich. Yeah. All right, so uh, we can we can uh, bring you back next season. And talk yeah, about yeah. <laughs> episode two. Yeah, we we'll have a whole show about us, a whole show about. I like term limits too. I think that's so necessary. Yeah, I think it is. That's we a whole can, other but that's episode. another story. We right? can sit you and Norby Shabir uh, together and talk about it. Norby is is a good one. I tell you what, <laughs> the Shabir family served this community well. Absolutely. Right, they, I love they, the community. They, they've served this community well. I was fortunate enough to know Leonard quite well. In, in actuality. When I got first put on the State Wildlife and Fisheries Commission, it was a Friday night. Norby called me. He said, uh, do you want to be on the Wildlife and Fisheries Commission? I said, I would love it. He said, it's a done deal. Look, okay, I'm with the governor right now. <laughs> Monday morning, the governor's office called, and poop, there I was. Perfect. Okay, yeah. Wow. Yeah. So how long you started with, you said you started with Vanderbilt, but how long in politics, basically? Well, you know, with the Planning Commission, eight years, and then the Parish Council, Four, so that was the 12 I was out for, and then now I'm back in. So, you know, 13, 13 or 14 years, well, only five years as an elected official, but, yeah. but eight years prior to that as an appointed official. And uh, we need to get involved because yeah. you learn so much. You know, I, I don't know how, how many of y'all have taken Leadership Terrible and know much about Leadership Terrible, but I, do but I was involved, yeah. like I said, from an early age in the community. And, you know, had the degree in history and government and thought I knew everything. Mm -hmm. When I got into Leadership Terrible, I realized how much more I could learn about this parish. Yeah, for okay? sure. There's so much and, to Because it's a diverse parish, okay? Right. And like I said, the district that I represent, there's a lot of fishing in it, but it's also, I, I represent the urban area as well. Right. So it's it, in the oil industry. So, no, no, you just, you know, you, you need to get involved. It's, a, I think, a nine-month course. You meet on Thursdays. Uh, one one Thursday a month, and then there's a a a, uh, a retreat towards the end, yeah. uh, an overnight right deal. It, but Karen Schilling does a great job with it, and and uh, it, it's something that that I think everybody would enjoy taking. It's a great way to get involved in the community. Well, there's no doubt about it. There's right. no doubt about it. Yeah. So being involved, you were saying earlier that you know you was elected to these uh, president of this association. Yeah. That tells me that a lot of people like you. When we said we were going to interview you, a lot of people were like, that's a really good guy. <laughs> well, that's nice with, to hear. With okay. that being said, it sounds like you do have a lot of accomplishments. What would you say is like your biggest accomplishment? Well, it's your children and all. But I'm well, I was about, about to say my children and my right, grandchildren right, and my right. wife of almost 51 years. Right. You know? we see, and he's not lying. We saw pictures of the grandkids already. Yep. Oh, and, yeah. And, Look, uh, I, I so show him. I have no problem the with that. Well, i got to kill a golf swing. Yeah. Professional. Oh, that does. That, that <laughs> does. If it is professional, uh, you know, accomplishment you feel to this date, you know, I, it's, it's hard to say because, I mean, it, it, when you do a lot of things, and I'm not trying to say I've done everything, but when you get involved in them, they, they're all worthy projects, right. okay? So they all have their merit. Yeah. I, you know, I, I don't know, I guess just maybe just getting elected uh, yeah. to an office is good because, you, you know, you need to go out and you need to meet the people and they have to know what you're all about. So you get involved and... And, and, and you're chosen by the people. Yeah, right. you know, but... but what was sad, and I, and I remind my fellow council people about this a lot of times, we are elected by the majority of the minority. Because yeah. people just don't vote. Right. And, and that's a shame, okay? It, it gets to be more of a popularity contest sometimes. Right. Yeah, right. And, and uh, so, you know, I, I guess, it, you know, again, I, I can't put one single thing that I think is, is a good uh, 
maybe I haven't done. That's why the, I said yeah. up to this point. Maybe I, I haven't done that part, the, the thing that point. is the most important yet. You know? still got so, that wild coming up. Bro. I hope so. You know, I, I hope, hope so. so too. So I can't wait till my hair gets gray. <laughs> <laughs> A little, little white right now. It's yeah, 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 yeah. The way. So, uh, running for parish president, you know, tell us about that experience. What did you learn from that? Uh, you know, something that you brought later yeah. into you in your political career. Well, you, you know, you know, it's fun. I mean, I ran for a, 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 a district seat first, and your district has about, uh, if memory serves me, about twelve thousand people because it's right. one man, one vote. So all the districts are basically the, the same size. And so you're concentrating on that one particular area. When you're running for a parish-wide office, right. you you got to encompass the entire parish. And I think that's where the Planning and Zoning Commission that I sat on helped me out. But, you know, just just meeting a lot of new people, it's fun. I, 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 I'm a person that likes to talk to people, yeah. okay? Uh, my grandson and I, when he was, he was in, this was before COVID, we were at, went to Rouse, okay? And... and uh, we got we loading the car and he says, uh, Paul, you talked to nineteen people. <laughs> I said, How you know? He said, I counted, Paul. All right. You talked to nineteen different people. I said, Well, he said, Did you know them all? I said, No, I, I might have known two or three of them, but you talk to people. That's how you you I learn get told things. That all the time you know, yeah, it's fun. Your dad was like that, okay? <laughs> My wife fusses me all the time. It takes us too long to leave a restaurant. There's nothing wrong with that. Yeah. There's like nothing wrong with that at all. You know, <laughs> that's good though. When you know people, people I want to talk to. Well, that that's what it's good, about. You know, it's it's you're good what you're doing. It's a lot easier to be friendly with people than to be angry with. Them, yeah, okay? absolutely. Well, I'd be angry, man. Yeah, yeah. You know, no. I just we got enough of that in this world. We don't need absolutely. to perpetuate. Everybody sure. just needs to get along. Yeah. Everybody should talk to more people. Yeah. Meet a stranger. No, you're right. Say hello. That's exactly right. So you were talking a little bit, too, about the seafood industry. Tell us a little bit about that. You are processing now. I believe you guys are doing other things. What's yeah, going on with that? I, you know, I, I got my start in, in, the, uh, in the seafood industry down with, at, uh, in Boudreaux Canal. Okay? Hey, hey, hey. At, at Indian Ridge Shrimp Company. And uh, Noah and I were talking about Indian Ridge used to have a, an old building right over here at the, by the Water Life Museum. I was fortunate enough to, to start working with Dickie Fockhead, Indian Ridge Shrimp Company, and Harold LaPere, who used to be a a former councilman, and uh, just kind of fell in love with the, the, the shrimp industry, right. okay? And again, I was on the processing side. I always like to tell the story because, you know, there's always been not a rift, but a big difference between the fisherman and the processor. Mm -hmm. And if you I always tell the story when you're on either side of the conveyor belt and the shrimp are coming up from the boat, all I see is the processor is the little shrimp in there, and all the shrimp it sees is the, <laughs> the big, big shrimp, shrimp in there. Yeah. Okay, right. that's a good way to the put big it. shrimp got more money in it. Right. Right. Yeah. That's why you take a three pound count and you get an average, okay? okay. But, uh, you no, know, started off at Indian Ridge Shrimp Company and, and then, you know, just uh, moved from there. And, and now I'm with a, a company called Jensen Tuna, but we actually we had four companies, and when we started it in, in here in Homa, we located right next to Chauvin Funeral Home. It was Gulf Fish. That was yeah. the shrimp yeah. side of it. And uh, now we, we go under the banner of Jensen Tuna, and we're actually the largest purveyor of tuna in the country. Really? In the last four days, we've had about 4,000 yellowfin tuna sure. and about uh, 20 bluefin tuna. That average anywhere from 400 to 700 pounds. Jeez, let's talk real quick. Right. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you like that tuna. You can, uh, you can <laughs> with that <laughs> ticket booklet, you don't have to slap the tuna tuna you can't, uh, you can't write down a couple of coordinates, huh? <laughs> for it go and check I'm telling you. <laughs> it, it, you know, we, we do a lot in tuna. Like I said, we're the largest purveyor of that, but we uh, we also do a lot in red snapper. We yeah. have commercial fishing, they have a quota, and we have about a million pound quota. Sure. And, uh, we don't own the quarter, but right. it, the boats do, and, and we unload throughout the year. And, and uh, it's it's just, again, my background is more shrimp. Right. Uh, David McGinnis, who I work with, is the is the fish guru. Fish guy. And and I've learned a lot from him over yeah. the last four years. You know, they like today we had twelve bluefin, and the way you grade uh, a tuna is you actually plug it right. behind the shoulder, if right. you will, and you cut a tail section. And, and they compare it to, you know, the, the fat content in it, right. the coloration in it, all of these different things. And they'll get me over there and say, what's the best fish? 
and inevitably I pick out the worst one, okay? Because I just <laughs> I just look at color and it doesn't have any fat in it. I, I don't know, okay? But but I can look at a shrimp and tell you if it's a 21, 25, or a 9, 12. Right, okay? yeah. Oh, so everybody, talk everybody has their little area of expertise right. is what it boils down to. Uh, the, the seafood business is, is uh, we one of the most highly regulated oh, businesses, yeah. industries in the country. Yeah, absolutely. Okay? And, and you got to remember what's, what's fun about it, what I always found intriguing, is you're dealing with Mother Nature, okay? Yeah. You, you, can, you can go have all the historical facts you want from what it was in 1950, what it was in 1952, but the next year could be completely right. different, okay? So, never know. You, you never that, know. Uh, Mother Nature sends it. And then now, certain circumstances. Yeah, Mother Nature. and then now things have changed drastically in Terrible and Parish because we have a levee system. Right. It's changed the whole hydrology of the water in Terrible and Parish. And listen, it's not putting one industry out, but, but again, we'll go back to like Gustav and Ike Hurricane. We had 10,000 homes that flooded in Terrible and Parish. Right. Last year, in the worst storm we had, we had one house to take on water. So the levees are working. Okay. Come along but way. for every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction. Right. You know, yeah. God, That's Newton's so. law, right? Yeah, yeah. I think, yeah. yeah. One of those it's Fig guys. Newton, right? One yeah, of Fig <laughs> Newton, those cool cookies. I got them. I love Fig Newton. Newton. <laughs> one of those smart guys, whatever. So uh, I know recently, I don't know, last year or whatever, it happened uh, with the regulation of the restaurant saying uh, imported. Imported. You got to, you got to, you got to. Label it if it's Correct. domestic or Correct. imported, Louisiana or whatever. Talk to me a little bit. You about know, that. Uh, unfortunately, Noah and I were talking about it earlier today. If people don't realize, ninety-five percent of the shrimp we consume in the United States, ninety-five percent comes from imported sources. That's a lot. Yeah. That's a kick in the gut too if you're from South Louisiana. Well, it, it really or, is. You know, you know, because you're like, man, I thought everybody like ate. Look, well, the Gulf South Gulf area, area, right? I well, mean, there's no doubt the entire Gulf of Mexico. So you know, laws have been put in place uh, to to protect the consumer. All right? right, and you should have a choice. And I'm not saying there's anything wrong with imported shrimp. Right. Okay? Right. I, what I'm saying is, is that we should take care of ourselves first right. before we take care of someone out the country. But again, we can't produce enough here in the United States to satisfy the appetite of the American public, okay? Right. Right. Uh, because basically, now, now this last year was a little bit different, but basically everything we catch in a year's time through, in the United States is basically sold. Right. right? But again, it only represents 5% of the total. So it, it's, uh, yeah. w without the imports, we would have a problem. But I think we all should have the, the, the right to know where that product came from. For sure. You know, absolutely. And, and, uh, Especially living in South Louisiana. Well, there's no doubt. I would, I would like to eat yeah. Louisiana shrimp. Uh, uh, shoot pick North Dakota. I mean, yeah. who gives a shit? Just well, give me the, yeah, those, those, those guys, <laughs> I mean, I'll once, you, once you get a couple of hundred miles away from the coast, they don't know one from another. Right. Right. Correct? Yeah. Right. But I, listen, I, we sell a lot of product up and down the Northeast. I sell into Canada, Chicago, the West Coast. <laughs> you know, uh, there'll, be, there'll be times that... Uh, We'll get a, a beautiful bluefin tuna in, and it'll go to Japan, okay? Yeah. But it's got to be a good one. All it's right. got to be Good-run. one of them. Yeah, it, it might cost you uh, seven, dollars $8,000 just to ship it there, so you know it's got to be a good fish, okay? Gee. Like on that TV show. Yeah, yeah, you know. Uh, there's a lot, of, Holly, there's a lot of Hollywood to that, though. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> a lot of lights, camera, and yeah, 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 yeah. Not, not Something too like too here, right? Yeah. Yeah. A lot of Hollywood This is, over this here. is really not real. Yeah, so we're, we're not even out of this still. No, there's oh. a green screen right here. No one knows that. We're still in Mitchell's living room. Check it out. But no, that, that wicked tune is, is a, you see, that's, that's catching it on a, on a line, right. okay? The way that tuna are caught in the Gulf of Mexico is long line. Right. They, they may be 10 miles of line, and they, and, but it's all highly regulated with certain type of hooks so you don't make incidental catches. You're targeting yellowfin tuna, and primarily that's what you're going to catch. The, the bigger, the different species will come off of that particular hook. So mm -hmm. you can't use live bait anymore. We, we, it's, like I said earlier, it's highly restrictive and, and uh, it makes it tough. The shrimp inside, years ago, they had to put Ted's in them. All you did was put that. a hole in your net. Ooh, How can man. you catch as much shrimp with My a hole in your net? I was so mad at <laughs> okay. that, bro. I, he hated them Ted's, yep. I remember yeah. Ted's. So yeah. That was uh, a big no. thing because the turtles... We're not going to breed properly. To get Correct. That, right? And we, we never caught a Kemperly turtle in, in the Gulf of Mexico. It's primarily off of Mexico. Right. So exactly so. the Ted. 
Ted, uh, is, Ted is, is a turtle device. Ex, turtle ex screwed up device. device. Right. Uh, what it is is they, they sold this device into the truck nut. I got gotcha. you. And, and the, if right a turtle and, and, and it has an opening in it, and if a turtle gets in there, it actually can open it up so it can get out. But as the turtle gets out. A lot of those shrimp well, get shrimp out too. Get out. So, shrimp, the current's flinging yeah, into the tail yeah. and it brings out a yeah, yeah, so, You yeah. got to take care of them turtles, man. So your grandpa was a, a, a Yeah, fisherman? yeah, yeah. He was a shrimper for a long time. Great. Uh, one of them, yeah. It's Ooh. a dying breed. It is a dying breed. You know? It is very unfortunate. It's a part of our culture that, that it's a shame that we lose it. We're you losing know? it, right? It's Cajuns too. Like, no, yeah. no, no yeah, Cajuns. We're losing a certain anymore. identity. That's more, no, it's exactly right. Right. It's more foreigners there down here shrimping even. Well, you know, I mentioned earlier, you know, what I can quote the statistic when I was the chairman of the Wildlife and Fisheries Commission, and that was probably 14 years ago now. That year we sold 14,500 commercial shrimping licenses. Uh -huh. Last year they sold 7,000. So what does that tell you? That's crazy. It's a dying in, in 14 breed. years, it's, it's half. It's a dying now, I'm not breed. telling you that technology hadn't gotten better, that maybe they're catching the same amount of pounds right. with less boats, that, that, you know, catch forever. Right, but, still. But, but still, there's that many people. You may be catching the pounds, but there's that many people less yeah. that are doing it now. Dying breed. It is. So tell me where them shrimp are running, man. <laughs> <laughs> right now they're not running at all because it's closed, okay? Well, look, Except the in the season, Gulf of Mexico. The May season's coming up. <laughs> That's it. That's where it? should we drop our nets? Oh, I see. I, Lake Boudreau is always a good spot. Okay? Yeah. There again, we, we talked about quick. the levees earlier. The levees, if we, it, once the lock is in the, in the, the ship channel mm -hmm. that we're building, uh, you won't have that estuary anymore because right. there's no way for that, that shrimp to get in. It's going to cut it off, correct? Shrimp are, are free spawning. They actually lay their eggs offshore. They're brought in with the currents. They yeah. get into the estuary. They grow, and then they move out as, as your, your, your fronts and things come through. And they are actually the best tasting uh, oh, thing yeah. in the world. There's nothing, like, there's nothing like inshore Louisiana shrimp. Oh, I could um, eat that yeah. every, like a... Oh. You know, we ask that question, we'll ask you later. Yeah. My answer would easily be any shrimp dish. Probably I could no doubt. Any day of the week. Yeah, every day no of the doubt. week. Doubt. Are you like Bubba Gump? You know everything there is to know about the shrimp and business? Well, I bet you're pretty close, <laughs> yeah. You know, what I, can you do with I a like shrimp? To, I like to think I know, but, I, you know, sometimes, <laughs> then you find out that how little you do know sometimes. Yeah, you, you got know? a point. Yeah. So I got a, I got a question that interests me because I am fish offshore a lot, but I know you on the shrimp side, not the fishing side. But, uh... Red snapper, you mentioned that earlier. Are we going to see a, a lax in, in that regulation? Well, you know, the I Teds. Like to catch more it's snapper. funny. <laughs> it's funny. The Teds were a direct relation to the turtles, but also they said that the fishermen were killing all the red snapper. Red snap, okay. Yeah. yeah. We got we, we have boats that literally go out week before last. One boat went out Thursday at noon. And came in Friday at noon with five thousand pounds. Yeah, there's not a shortage of red snapper. Absolutely, they're, they're everywhere. They jump in now. Now the commercial side is is regulated in terms of of, of how many pounds they can catch. Right. They're permitted. The recreational side, it's numbers. Two fish. Two fish. I, I mean, it's <laughs> almost it's almost price prohibitive unless you got ten guys in a boat to right. go out there. And, and you how much might, fuel it costs you know, to get yeah. out there. And what, what what frustrates us is you might get a weekend, you might get a month. That's exactly you might right. Get yeah. Six months, yeah. whatever. The, yeah. You know, whatever y'all meet the yeah. whatever they meet the quotas. So they meet the quota. All when a certain number or pound. Whatever the quotas yeah. met, it stops. Yeah. The season's over. No more. That's right. And it's only on weekends. It's only on yeah. weekends, not during the weekday. You get two fish, and that's, I mean, and that's a wrap. And if like I say, it's, it's highly regulated it's on both everywhere. sides. I mean, yeah. there. I mean, you go offshore fishing, you catch it. You might, you're not going to be trying to catch red snapper, and you catch red snapper. There's very little bycatch. What we refer to as bycatch in, in the industry. You know, escalor, uh, mahi, different things like that. These these boats are sophisticated enough. When they get on the snapper, that's all you catch. That's snapper. all you yeah. right. school okay. of that. And you yeah. hit. Yeah, and I, I mean love we love the bycatch. I, mean, yeah. I love red snapper. I haven't done it in a while, you know. But uh, that's fun. Oh, it's a lot, a lot of fun, you know. For a little while. Yeah, yeah well, it gets to be work too. You know? Yeah, <laughs> but you know, it'd be work for me throwing up because I don't like. Yeah. Uh, no, you're not an offshore out. guy. No, I'm not. Uh, my sea legs are not underneath me, man. Well, <laughs> after 43 years, they out. I think I'm the only not. fisherman in the group, actually. Yeah. Well, you see, if you drink enough of the the, the, the uh, contraband, the contraband, yeah. then 
yeah, kind of balanced it well. Yeah, they could probably okay. throw me in. Yeah. yeah go so you have any, uh, so you remember this building as well? Oh, yeah, I do. I remember building. growing up. Yeah. No, this at Bloom and Bajeron, yeah. you know, was, was uh, they, they were kind of on the forefront. You know, we, we, again, I keep referring to Noah because it's his place, but we were yep. talking about that earlier. I mean, the barrels of dry shrimp in that picture up in the front, and they, they, would, send, they would send to China. Okay. Yeah, they Today were. it's it's the opposite way coming. Okay, uh, <laughs> the dry shrimp business is, is a dying business as well. Absolutely. Taiwanese kind of took that over probably 15, 18 years ago, but uh, yeah, you know, and the, the, the advent of refrigeration, and that's when that's when the seafood industry really got big. Right. Once refrigeration came Once into you play, could store it. Once you could store it, you know, you get it in, Game peel changing. it, store it, freeze it, whatever. Uh, that's when the industry really took off. And I think that's where the uh, the foreign countries saw it. They, yeah. they took advantage. You know, we you got a you got a good population of people that like seafood, so we gonna start growing it. <laughs> right, and we'll send it to it there to for half the price, and yeah, and we'll make money. Yeah, yeah. yeah. kind of go back to the uh, political side of, of your career. Um, what do you see? Like, what do you, would you like? To, you got anything important coming up that you you know working on that you see? Well, I like to I like to think that that everything this, we do is important. Right. Okay. And I know you you're going big there, in but this, in this, uh, you know, I, I guess the, the the big talk, you know, besides the levees and, and, and the pump stations that we build in here, you know, which have come a long way. Ter- Terrebonne Parish, you know, like all coastal communities, are sinking. Okay. I mean, we live in a marshy area. We yeah. we. We, we levied off the Mississippi River in the late 20s, okay? So it, it, it doesn't build land anymore. We lose land, you know? And, and, you know, the old saying was you buy property down to buy about a foot one day and a gallon the next, okay? And it's happening, okay? <laughs> it's true. It's, it's happening. funny, but it's yeah, true. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, with, with, the, with the levy system, which we've been, the levy board has done a great job here in Terrebonne Parish, we, we're protecting ourselves now. I, I really believe that, that we probably ahead of most coastal communities. Because in the next, I won't be around to see it, but in the next 40 to 50 years, most coastal communities, be it on the East Coast, West Coast, or the Gulf of Mexico, subsidence and uh, you know, sea, water, uh, sea level rise is going to affect us. So you're going to have to levy yourself off in some way. The Dutch did that years ago. Right, okay. right. So uh, we can, and we need to learn from them. We see the big one, the Netherlands yeah. doing everything. But I mean, you know, in government, I mean, we, we spend a lot of time on that right now, and I think we are ahead of the curve here in yeah. Terrible right. Parish, okay? So that leaves us room to start concentrating on other things. I mean, you know, roads and bridges are always things that we're going to have to work on. Quality of life issues. Recreation is a big thing right now. Yeah, we've uh, had a, quite a few people talk about that. Yeah, sure. you know we, uh, you know we we formed as a council. Jessica Domain uh, led the, the way on it. We formed a, what we refer to as the uh, Recreation Modernization Committee. Okay, yeah, cool. and uh, I I, I want to say it was 15 members, and I'm probably wrong. 15, 18, but uh, their task, and they asked each one of us to go in, but. You know, as council people, I, I don't think we should be there at every meeting because they're tasked with a responsibility of coming up with information to give to us that we may have to vote on or right. the voter may have to vote okay. on, the, the, the electorate. So their job, in my opinion, was to take a look at recreation the way it was in the past. Yeah. You study history, mm. okay? Look at it where we are right now. Yeah. And let's marry, marry those two together and see if we can make it better in the future. What about, uh, so let me ask you a tricky question. All right, all right. let me get ready. Get okay. ready for this one. Okay. I know you're in the shrimping industry, so this might be obvious, but favorite Cajun dish? Oh, I tell you what, shrimp stew is one of my favorites. Ooh, it's, it's, hard it's, it's hard to beat. I mean, it, it really is. Now, look, one of the best smelling, and I love it too, is, is the crab stew. Okay? Oh, yeah. But, I mean, I, I guess because I'm in the shrimp business, I, I just love Shrimp Hard stew. To be. You oh, shrimp gumbo. In you know, you potatoes in your shrimp stew. Mm, you know, sometimes. Okay. You know, look, you, you got to change egg, around right, a little right, bit. Right. You got everybody. Egg look, there, look, I've never, I've never had a bad shrimp stew. Okay. <laughs> you know. Yeah, you ain't. Some lying, are better bro. than others. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah but yeah. none are bad. Right? <laughs> no, I've never had a bad one. Yeah, I love shrimp stew. You could probably see it in my fast food. Yeah. You know, I mean, shrimp fricassee. My. My wife and, and girls love ball crabs, okay? And right. my mother-in-law, rest our soul, Gloria Marcella, uh, we 
be sitting down at the camp on Grand Isle or whatever, eating ball crabs, and, and I would just be sitting there maybe eating the potatoes, and she'd say, oh, that's right, you don't like ball crabs. <laughs> Oh, no, no, you don't like peeling the crabs, okay? <laughs> There's yeah. a difference. She'd get me there. I said, Gloria, look, you want to peel them, I'll eat them. Okay, like the but whole I'm just damn thing. Yeah. yeah, yeah, I don't like I get, I get to a certain point. I get frustrated. Just, yeah, oh, okay, yeah. I'm done. Yeah, <laughs> I you know, I'm, it, it's, I mean, it's like I eat more of the sides. Yeah. <laughs> I do, you know, I catch myself doing that, too. I mean, you put so many vegetables in what you, you're oh, cooking. Mushrooms in a bowl? Mushrooms oh, and oh. carrots. That's I, my ca- favorite. Man, I'm, I'm, I'm a carrot guy in there. But, no, that's, you know. That's, That's a good answer. Too, you know? I think you're the first, actually. I, I like a little potato salad with that, too, now. Okay, oh. okay I got a question here. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Do you put the potato salad in your shrimp Oh, in the gumbo. I put it in the gumbo. Yeah. That's for sure. Yeah. Yeah. You better be watching this, boy. That's a heated That's topic. That's another check. Gumbo in the potato That's salad. That's a heated topic here on uh, Between oh, the yeah. Barrels. Definitely. It, it's all got to be mixed Next together. Next time you go to okay. Zach's, you need to mention that. <laughs> My dad, uh, yeah, who's been dead for 52 years, okay, in his plate, nothing could touch, okay? Everything had to be separate. Wow. He wouldn't eat in a paper plate, and he didn't like plastic forks. See me? Just put the food in front of me. I don't care if it's in a paper plate, a plastic fork, and I'll mix it all let's together. Get it, right? huh? yeah, let's get it. Let's get it. Let's get it. I like to slow down, slow down. I'm like, yeah. I'm like you. Yeah. Okay, oh, yeah. let's eat. Let's yeah. eat. Let's yeah. do it. I like, I like it. it, man. So another question we like to ask everyone. Hit them with the heat of chat. Yeah. <laughs> so just in case people don't know, on April 17th, they will have the first annual Parish Pedro Tournament, also at the Boucherie. Right, Jason? All right, cool. right, Jason? That's going to be April 17th as well. Pedro. Uh, so we heard they're going to have a cutthroat and a follow suit bracket. The two champs will then play for all the money in the world. Woo! And a nice little trophy. So, what bracket would you fall in? I would Cut- fall in the cutthroat. Cutthroat. Oh, oh terrible, terrible parish. parish terrible man. parish. With the, that's with that's thro- exactly right. With the cutthroat. The yeah. little, you know, they they both fun, the but, but but when you grow up one way, that's yeah. the way you like playing. Yeah. That's it. Okay, and and right. uh, we. I was we, taught that's only when when we were at Nichols, <laughs> we played a lot of Pedro in the. Uh, you know. That's what we hear from our guests. We got yeah. a lot of alumni from Nichols. Yeah. Uh, and a lot of Pedro's played. I graduated there. from Nickel State College. That's how old I am. Ooh, okay. We <laughs> my saw wife, that. <laughs> my wife finished the next semester, and it was Nickel State University. Then. Okay, so, so when you did it, it was a college. It that's was Nickel State in College. Yeah. In, in the quad, man, you go, you just go and Pedro turn it. Yeah. Right. Oh, that's it. Grab that's, a partner and play. Let's, let's go. go. Yep. No, it was a lot of, of fun, man. A lot that's of fun. Awesome. Go that's play awesome. Pedro. And uh, boy, that, you know, talking about Nichols. Nichols has really grown into a great university. Absolutely, uh, I mean, it beautiful was, too. Out you know, there. Nichols, start, Nichols started off as a junior college in in under the LSU system in 1948. Wow. Nichols opened its doors on, if if memory serves me correct, September 21st, 1948. Because I was born September 7th, 1948. <laughs> okay, All right. and I, I remember the year. But you know, it, it was. It was more of a commuter college when I was going. Right. Okay, I mean, we, we drove back and forth right. uh, to Nichols. Look, they didn't even have the overpass in Shreve then. We'd, get, sure. we'd catch the train. And you'd have to wait. And we'd have to wait for the train. Okay? Late for class. But, you know, I mean, it's just, it's a good problem. I got a heck sometimes. of a football yeah. squad right now. Boy, I'm telling you. You know, it's it building. Man, they're looking it's great. It's a beautiful place with the athletic department over there, and the baseball field. I built a press box over there. And, and, and you know, I tell you what, nice. uh, and, and the beauty about Nichols, it, it's kept this identity, I think, okay? Because, I mean, there's still a lot of people from Terrebonne, Lafourche, St. Mary, Assumption, that go to Nichols, right. okay? Yeah. There's a lot of people from New Orleans, Jefferson yeah. Parish, that come. Because when I was in college there, there was a lot of guys that commuted, you yeah. know, uh, from, from the, the Jefferson Parish, yeah. St. Charles area, right. you know, to come to Nichols. It's a good school, you know. It is. Got a great nursing program. Yeah, uh, a lot of good things. Got one there. kid there good. right now. Do you? Yeah. I good got a granddaughter school. there now. Yep. Yeah, good. Uh, excellent culinary one school. One of the best yeah. in the yeah. country. Yeah, bro. Yeah. false ones that yeah. one. Yeah. Absolutely. One of the but the football country. team is doing real. I, I got a nephew that played. Todd Rivera played there a, yeah. a number of years back. You know Todd. Yeah, 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 Todd. Yeah, yeah. They got a big game this week, I think. They play Sam Houston. Uh, yeah. It's kind of like a barometer test. Like if Correct. you could beat them, then, boy, you might be legit. Just watch <laughs> out now. 
Well, yeah, they had quarterback I'm, too, Lindsey Scott. I'm just his. glad that they they have the opportunity to play. Yeah, well, you're yeah. right. That too. You know, that is that, that's that's what it's all about. I mean, you know, you I'm glad they waited. You know, we all had to give up a lot of things, but you know, just think about the kids in high school. Think about the kids in college that lost a year. You well, know, the seniors. Yeah. Okay, you know that that could not do it. Oh, okay. We lost out on their seasons yeah. and stuff. Yeah. But but again, I, I think we're going to bounce back stronger than we were before. I hope we do. Anyway, I think so. I think, I think so too. Uh, yeah. You touched on it earlier. I think the community is gonna, has really come together. Yeah, right? it, it, it takes, but it takes all phases of it to get back together. Yeah, right. You know? I agree. And, uh, we gotta get back out there and oh, we gotta hang get out. There, throw me something, Mister. That's what you I'm know? talking about. Yeah. Cook some pig. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> A little fade do do. Oh. Yeah, no, no, this was fun, guys. Just talking about Terrible Parish and his people are fun. You know I really I mean? appreciate you coming out, man. Yeah, I mean, that's why we call it the Good Earth, right? That's it. Terrible. That's it. Okay. Right Thank, Thank you, man. Good Earth Bourbon. Thank you, sir. Thank appreciate you, brother. It. We really appreciate, appreciate you being it. out here. Don't forget, too, the Good Earth Bourbon's coming out from Bayou All Terrible. All right. Hey, you said Good Earth. Uh, they're bottling up now. I think it's going to be ready beginning of next month. It's definitely going to be here April 17th at the Boucherie. <laughs> at the Boucherie. Oh, yeah, I didn't yeah. know they had a Boucherie on yeah, April no. 17th. Now I know. I, I, just, oh, I news, knew it, brother. I, knew I it. tell you all about it. <laughs> tell me all about it. No, this is great, guys. I, listen, it, it, it was an honor to be asked to come here. And it's an honor hope, to sit down with I you, I hope sir. to come back again. Okay? Absolutely. We uh, would love for you to come back. Now, we now, need I to talk. Know, now I know what you guys are about here. I got a plethora of stories. <laughs> that's, what we, that's what we need. We need more of those stories. Yeah. I, I think so. We like stories. Oh, well, so yeah, we're going to yeah. learn, then we hear about what happened no, in the past. That's you know? exactly right. We, so like, works. we definitely like stories. Well, once again, appreciate you coming out. Yeah, thank you guys yeah, for having it, me, bro. Man. And as thank always, appreciate, appreciate Body Terrible and the Steelers is having us. Tune by Norm. Do a good, good job. We out, baby. All right. All right. That's it. Wrap us. <laughs> Boom. Cheers.